Welcome to the new moon in Libra. Welcome to Libra season. This video is going to be so lit. I already feel it. So you want to make sure that you watch the whole thing. You want to make sure you watch this first part where we really dive into what all of this means. What is this new moon in Libra? What does it mean? What can you expect to start seeing not only in your life, but just collectively in general? And then we are going to go over what it means for your sign. I am so freaking pumped up about this Libra new moon and about Libra season because it is my birthday season. We got a few more weeks still until my birthday, but I am a Libra sun. So this is my vibe. This is my season and I am so, so excited for it. And also really quick before we start. If you didn't know, I have a new super, super affordable mini program that is about to happen this coming week for loving the fuck out of yourself and for rebirth those two things kind of combined. It's super, super intensive. I'm treating it like my high-end shit because I am so, so passionate about it. Because if we do not know how to love ourselves, if we do not have that relationship with ourselves, our external reality starts to reflect that in so many ways. We start to feel lost. We start to feel confused. We question our decisions. We question where we're going. We don't know our purpose, this, that, and the other. We don't know what feels purposeful to us. And so it is so, so, so crucial to have self-love in your life, to love yourself. My life always goes a thousand times better when that relationship with myself is that much stronger when I feel good about myself, when I love myself, and I'm giving you basically everything that I have on self-love and that I've discovered on self-love that has really, really brought me to rebirth time and time again, even this year, like the last, uh, the, the summer was a pretty difficult time for me. And I know it was a difficult time for a lot of people. And so this is why I want to do this. And I'm offering it at a super, super low price right now. Also, on top of that, I am for the first time in forever doing a sale on my astrological readings, my chart readings. So if you've been wanting to get a reading, a chart reading, and you want to understand your chart, but you also want to understand certain aspects of yourself or your life even deeper, then that is what I do in my chart readings. And so I... I kind of point myself on being able to make astrology relatable and understandable because I'm very, uh, I'm very talented at that. I'm very good at that. I'm really good at breaking things down in an easy way to understand. I also have an astrology course that had amazing, amazing feedback that you can get as well linked below if you want to learn astrology. So that is everything that I have going on right now. If you are interested with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this Libra new moon. So this new moon, what is a new moon? A new moon is when the sun and the moon align in the sky. They are at the same place in the same sign. They are aligned in the sky in the same sign. So the sun and the moon are coming into an alignment in the sign of Libra, right? So what does Libra deal with? This is a very interesting new moon, you guys. Like, this is so much more than just a new moon. And that's why, like, I, I'm just so excited to be doing this video right now. But Libra is the sign of the scales, right? Balance, harmony. You hear a lot of those kind of key words when it comes to Libra. But why does Libra really rule these things? Well, Libra is an air sign. And it's which is masculine so it's a masculine side when it's ruled by venus which is the planet of feminine energy right venus is very very feminine Pl venus is literally the embodiment of feminine energy right like the the planet of feminine energy so basically with venus ruling a intellectual air sign we're going to see these themes come out in a certain social way right these themes are going to be a little bit more social a little bit more expressive so this really goes into the in the the ways in which we articulate ourselves and the ways in which we learn the ways in which we socialize venus is a very social planet so with it ruling libra therefore we kind of have this ripple effect where libra ends up ruling relationships a lot of the times because venus rules relationships and venus rules the sign of libra now taurus doesn't really so much rule relationships because taurus is an earth sign so it's more focused on physical and material matters but since libra is an air sign there's more of this social element, this communication, this back and forth, this connection, right? And with Venus being the ruler of this air sign, it plays out more so in these expressive ways, therefore these dynamics with others. Now, Libra is also the first opposite sign that we get to because Aries to Virgo 
none of them oppose each other, right? They're all the first six signs of the zodiac. Then we get to Libra, and Libra is the first sign that opposes another sign, which is Aries, right? So Libra is the seventh sign and the first sign to oppose or mirror another sign. And that's why Libra rules a lot of what it does, but it also falls on the fall equinox, which is where we have an equal day or equal uh, amount of light and dark, an equal uh, time of day and night, right? Where the time kind of changes, the the tides kind of change, right? The, the script is flipped, basically. So we have all of these mirroring qualities, these mirroring traits, these opposite traits with Libra. So it rules relationships because to know yourself, you know yourself through other people. And that's why the sun is in fall in Libra, actually. So Libra suns are basically fucked. <laughs> I mean, not really, but, but Libra suns can have it rough because the sun does not like to be in Libra. The sun is about me and Libra is about we, right? The sun is very identity focused, individual focused. It's the king or the father. It's like, you know, this is the path and this is who I am. And this is my, my, like I'm shining my own light. And then it's in Libra, which is very much about like, others and and opposites and you know all of these different other dynamics to do with relationships and things like that and so the sun does not like to be in libra because it you can lose a little bit of yourself in other people and so that's kind of the shadow side to libra but we'll get more to that in a minute so some of the other things that libras or that libra as a sign rules is fairness you know uh social etiquette being classy right being classy about things and uh doing things in a smooth and and peaceful and more charming way right like libra energy can be very charming very romantic very much about peace and you know smoothing over those sharp edges right Libra is also very much about looking at all sides, looking at all perspectives, playing the devil's advocate, whatever will balance the situation. If there's a group of people talking about one subject and uh, one way of thinking, one opinion, and they all have the same opinion, Libra is likely going to want to know the other side of that, right? Because it's about balance. And so it's not, it can be about peace. It can be about compromise. It can be about meeting in the middle and, you know, keeping that peace between parties and keeping that fairness going, finding that, that harmony. But it can also be opposing in a lot of ways because to play the devil's advocate, you have to oppose the popular narrative. And a lot of the times it's not even from a place of being attached, right? Like Libra is usually very unbiased in the situation. We're not attached to a particular opinion or dogma or, you know, whatever perspective. It's just like, hey, this one's not being uh, seen over here. So I'm going to raise this one up to level the playing field, right? And so that is very much Libra, but it does have this easygoing, diplomatic kind of energy to it a lot of the times. It does like to look at all sides. It does like to negotiate and mediate. And, you know, because Venus, which is a very harmonious planet that likes to feel good and look good and connect with others and, you know, kind of flirty and, you know, all of that in a social sign like Libra, it's going to play out in those ways socially and expressively, right? is expressively a word. I don't know, but it's it's going to express itself, right? It's going to be articulating itself in a way that is very diplomatic, that is very charming, that is very, you know, flirtatious, that does like to that is more easygoing, right? And so now on the shadow side of this, and these are all things we can see coming up over the next several weeks that we are in Libra season, but starting at this new moon and I'm going to get to what this new moon is actually going to bring likely in a minute. So some of the shadow traits are we can see this people pleasing come in. We can see this like repressing ourselves or repressing our own identities, repressing our own thoughts, our own feelings, etc. to not rock the boat, to not start conflict. And we can become a little bit too obsessive with trying to keep the peace or trying to keep the balance, right? And kind of repress our own identity, our own sense of authenticity to kind of you know, fit in or to keep the balance. And that can get very old at times, right? That can start to feel uh, very repressive and it can and it can start an internal conflict, right? And so there can be this kind of easing around conflict. Now, on the other side of that though, there is, this is a very good time to ease conflict. This is a very good time to harmonize and mend different things that may have felt very, uh, 
you know, that, that may have been very edgy or just confrontational recently. This is a good time to kind of find the middle ground to mediate and to come to some kind of understanding so there's not all of this edgy, rocky energy going on, right? So this is also a time where we can, another shadow trait is kind of really questioning our decisions like too much, to an extreme, right? Where we can have trouble deciding. Uh, we can also kind of, you know, feel a little bit co more codependent, more dependent on others or uh, lose ourselves in others, kind of like I said before. And so those are kind of a lot of the shadow traits of Libra. And we can see a lot of that coming up uh, around this time over the next few weeks. So just if you ever are struggling over these next few weeks, come back to this video and kind of reassess and, and all of that. So with this new moon in Libra, what's really awesome about this new moon is it's opposite Jupiter and Aries. So it is showing us a whole new perspective, a whole different side of something, right? In a really big way. So it may be showing us a new side of certain beliefs that we've been carrying, right? Jupiter can rule beliefs. Jupiter can rule our morals, you know, our big, big kind of worldviews and belief systems. And so we could be seeing a totally another side to that. Uh, we could also have major perspective shifts around this time, like, you know, where we were so set on seeing things one way, and we weren't really aware of other viewpoints or other perspectives, this new moon could bring in a massive major new perspective that really changes and alters our viewpoint, really changes the way that we see something that we've been operating, that we believe, you know, these kinds of things. And so we can definitely, you know, see that coming up as well. We can also really see like uh, our vision change, right? Like Jupiter and Aries, has been so much about the individual, right? Acting on instinct, where you take action, masculine energy, initiating, right? Like moving ahead, moving forward, things like that. Jupiter and Aries is, is very much about the individual. It's like, this is me and this is where I'm going and that's that. It's not looking at everybody else, what everybody else thinks, what everybody else wants, what everybody else's opinion is. It's not looking at that, right? It's just like, this is where I'm headed, you know, move forward, that's it, at a fast pace, right? But we could have been going too fast. We could have been moving, you know, too fast. We could have been kind of leaping without thinking. And so this Libra new moon is giving us a beautiful chance to kind of see a new perspective and to kind of, you know, harmonize that in a lot of ways and to kind of see a new side and come to a new understanding about the actions we've been taking, the direction we've been going. And we may even find that, uh, a lot of our new perspectives or a lot of the perspective shifts end up coming from others, people that we're in relationships with or just other people in our lives, social media, whatever, any kind of other person really. It's like, it doesn't have to be a particular kind of person, but we could find that interesting perspectives or really eye-opening perspectives, evolving perspectives, like, you know, kind of come from others at this time. You know, like it's like someone else could kind of wake us up to something. Someone else could kind of change our perspective since Libra rules other people. So there's a loss, also a lot of mirroring that goes on with Libra, with opposites, right? So what we can a lot of the times find is that other people will be mirroring back to us parts of ourselves, right? That we either don't like or that we've repressed or even that we admire, you know, like if there's somebody, and that's another thing with Libra, it can bring up comparison. So, and all these are things you could notice for this new moon, but also over the next several weeks until we get to Scorpio season. So do keep that in mind. But what can a lot of times happen is, you know, there can be someone in our lives that we're comparing ourselves to, right? And that maybe even we've been kind of competing with, right? With this Jupiter and Aries energy. Maybe there's been this like internal competition going on or even external competition. We've been comparing ourselves. And this is a time where we could really see like, oh, what I've been comparing myself to in this person is actually within me right? I have that too. I have that ability too. I just think that I don't for some reason, right? And this could open up a whole new awareness, a whole new mindset that we can like move forward with and grow and, and grow upon and actually cultivate, you know, and kind of learn to embody more, right? And so that is kind of like the beauty of this. Now, on top of this, we also have Venus and Mercury, uh, coming into their conjunction in Virgo. And this is important because Venus is the ruler of this new moon in Libra. 
So Venus is like a big deal, right? Where have we been caught up in perfectionism, caught up in trying to improve ourselves? Where have we placed these maybe unnecessary limits on ourselves because we thought we had to be perfect or we thought we had to fit in or we thought we had to, you know, do things a certain way or buy the book or follow these steps or whatever. But maybe that's not necessarily the case. Maybe it's time to chill. Maybe it's time to lean back. Maybe it's time to get back into something that feels more go with the flow, right? Like Libra is an air sign. So it's kind of go with the flow. It, Like I said, it, it softens sharp edges. So it's not very big about like, you know, major commitments and, you know, things like that. Like it, it just wants to kind of be somewhat free in a lot of ways and feel good while it's being free, right? Like so, and, and look good while it's being free too. But so, this can definitely point to a really interesting conversation that can point out a lot of things that we're not seeing, a lot of signs, a lot of details that we're missing um, or that we did miss, you know, recently. A lot of different situations that we weren't quite looking at, you know, this can bring back up certain topics from like the last month or two. This can bring back up certain perspectives that we weren't seeing or that we had started to see. It's almost like the puzzle pieces are coming together. The whole puzzle isn't quite there yet, but we're getting different pieces to the puzzle and we're starting to see a bigger picture, right? It's like we have the puzzle maybe 50% done. And so we're starting to see what the picture is going to be like, right? Because for the last few months, with all this retrograde energy, there's been a lot of going back, a lot of slowing down, a lot of things resurfacing, a lot of things getting drudged up, a lot of things just feeling off or not right or not quite normal or usual, right? There's been a lot of things just feeling really fucking weird, you know? Like I know for me, like this summer was weird and totally out of the norm. And like I, I talked a lot about that in my last video, the journey back to self that's on my channel, the the free uh, live session I did where I talked about finding yourself and you know how my own journey this year and how it's been just totally random and not normal, like not a normal journey that I've, I've quite been through before. And I had to really kind of learn different things and, and all of that because I just felt stuck for a, for a while. And so, yeah, it's just, it's been a lot of kind of just going back and slowing down and it can feel very it's it possibly has been feeling very confusing right and so this new moon is coming in and it's showing us a bigger picture it's showing us a bigger vision a new like new perspectives new conversations new ways of look new sides new ways of looking at things it's bringing new things into our awareness to help us put these puzzle pieces together right to help us really understand like okay where are we going and it's not this big vision that we're only focusing on like there's balance in the chart right now where we can see some of the big vision but we can also focus on the small simple steps that we can do right now to start building to that vision right to start actually taking like doing certain things that are going to get us there right and a lot of that goes into our mindset too with mars and gemini you know which ways are we thinking and it can kind of feel like we have these conflicting conflicts and within our thinking right conflicts within our mindset and so it, it, there can be a lot of mental chatter there can be a lot of like just confrontational ways of thinking that are kind of keeping us stuck now, on top of this, Venus is and Neptune are opposed, or I'm sorry, Venus and Mercury are opposing Neptune during this new moon as well. And this is a big deal because it really is kind of this energy where we are having to come back in balance between trying to perfect things, trying to control things, and trying to limit things and make things be a certain way, trying to, trying to find a narrow fix for things a solution to everything versus letting go versus surrendering versus forgiving, right? This can bring up a lot of, you know, guilt, shame, where we need to forgive ourselves, where we need to let certain things go, where we need to, you know, get back into maybe our, our spiritual practices, you know, or back into some kind of practice that really helps us evolve or helps us 
like helps our our spiritual our spirituality in some way like our spiritual health right this can also show us kind of insight or intuitive insight into certain relationships in our lives, into certain connections in our lives, into certain relationship dynamics in our lives as well. So these are some other things that we could definitely see coming up. And this could come through a conversation. This could come through, you know, speaking to different people. And this could also be like, you know, again, like little details, little fixes little changes that that cause a really big change right with this virgo pisces energy because also venus and mercury are trining pluto and capricorn so little small adjustments right now can make an extreme extreme change and really transform us in a lot of ways so with that being said this libra new moon in my opinion is a beautiful new moon it's not like, oh my God, everything's amazing and I am just like on top of the world kind of energy, but it is an energy of like rebalancing something that has maybe felt a little bit out of place in our life, something that maybe has felt a little stuck, seeing things like from a fresh perspective, a new perspective that can really motivate us again, that can really inspire us again, like finding that motivation again, right? And seeing different sides of the situation. And like I said, that can really come from other perspectives, right? Other people's perspectives, conversations, you know, things like that. So definitely let me know down below if any of this resonates so far, what you guys think of this first part of the video. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. And now we are going to get into the readings for each sign. Your rising sign will resonate most and there will be timestamps down below in the description and maybe in the comments. Um, most people put their timestamps in the descriptions now, um, but some people still don't look there for some reason and don't think that they're there. So I always have timestamps. They will be in the description, sometimes in the comments too, but they're always gonna be in the description. So anyways, <laughs> I love you. Let's go ahead and get into the sign readings. Alrighty, starting with you. Libra darling, if you are a Libra rising, this will resonate most for you. But Libra, this new moon is happening in your first house. So like I always say, new moon, new you, right? And this can definitely feel like new moon, new you because you just went through a lot in terms of Mercury retrograding in your sign, Mercury ruling your 12th, the sun traveling through your 12th. So you've likely felt very exhausted. You've likely had to get a lot of things under control in terms of things going on behind the scenes, things that you had been avoiding, things that you've been putting off, maybe some health stuff was coming up. You know, maybe just, you know, there was just a lot that you had to fix in terms of behind the scenes stuff that was still controlling your life, old habits, you know, maybe some mental health, maybe some physical health, you know, things like subconscious patterns, things that were just keeping you stuck. And so this, you know, this time has really been about like cleaning out what's keeping you from improving, right? What's keeping you from uh, being healthier and feeling better in your life, right? And so with this new moon happening in your sign, this can feel like so fresh, <laughs> like icy fresh energy. This can feel like, oh my gosh, yes, like, I understand this energy because you are a Libra rising, right? So it's like, I understand this energy. This feels familiar. This feels good, right? So this new moon can definitely be bringing a lot of new beginnings in your life right now. Now, you still may feel some of that 12th house energy that you've been feeling the last few weeks kind of in the background that you may still be working on. But at the same time, there's also finally this feeling of like a peak or like a new beginning or like you're turning a corner, you know, as a new chapter maybe is starting, right? And so you can really feel that at this time. Now, you also may be delving into different spiritual practices, holistic practices, you know, things like that, uh, things that are maybe very spiritual, but somehow, you know, by working on them, they are helping you in your day to day life. They're helping you with your day to day health, your day to day routines, things like that, you know, with this Mercury Venus conjunction opposing Neptune. Now, this is also a time where you might be getting a lot of new perspectives on your relationships. And, you know, your beliefs about relationships, your vision and what you want and where you want to expand within your relationships. Like this new moon is opposing Jupiter in your seventh house. So this is definitely a time where 
you could be getting new perspectives on your relationships. And some of those perspectives could be coming from another person, uh, or they could just be coming from this energy coming in where you really see a different side of something. You really see a different way of looking at something, a different way of viewing something. And you're finally feeling ready to you know, kind of move forward, right? There there can be kind of this motivation, this, um, like I was saying earlier, it's like kind of like the pieces of the puzzle are kind of starting to fit. If you didn't watch the first part of this video, I would definitely, definitely watch it because I talked about Libra energy in general, like this is your new moon, so it's all about you. So you definitely don't want to miss the first part of this video. But I talked a lot about Libra as a sign and things like that, that you may relate to a lot. So so yeah, this can also be a time where you're seeing different sides of yourself, where you're maybe seeing where you haven't quite been true to yourself or where others' actions or behaviors have kind of somehow been at the forefront, you know, like where you've been more worried about others or where you've been kind of feeling a little bit more in like that people pleasing energy or something like that. So that could be something that you really see come up from this too. But overall, I feel like this is a time to get back to you. This is a time to get back to the things that you love that bring you balance, that bring you harmony, that make you feel like you, right? And so you could really be feeling that energy with this new moon starting to come in and you will feel it building even more as the weeks go on, as Venus finally moves into your sign and Mercury goes direct. Like after that, things will be finally like all the way moving forward. So that is what I see for you, Libra. Let me know down below if that resonated. I am having a 22% off sale right now on my natal chart reading. So if you are interested, see the description below. I also have a one week self-love program starting on Monday. If that interests you, which definitely could be pretty good for Libra Risings right now, but if that interests you, then see the description down below. It's super affordable uh, just because I really want a lot of people to access this as a Libra son myself self-love has been a very big part of my life and my journey because Libra can tend to, you know, kind of use the reflection you see of yourself and others as who you are, right? It's like you, like when you're in a relationship, you kind of become the relationship, like the identity of relationship, the relationship becomes your identity at times. And you have to kind of step out of that and figure out who you are outside of the relationship. Um, and not just base it on who you are in the relationship, right? And so it's kind of like that. But anyways, that is what I'm seeing for you, Libra. Let me know down below if that resonated. And we are going to move on to Scorpio. So first Scorpio, this Libra new moon is happening in your 12th house. And so this can be a time where you are going to feel a little bit more drawn within where you are going to feel a little bit more drawn into the unknown, you know, to take a step back to maybe rest a little bit more. You're, you're going to find harmony through rest. You're going to find harmony through recovery. You're going to find harmony through healing. You're going to find harmony through taking a step back and removing yourself from your day-to-day -day life from this point forward for the next few weeks, right? Because this is your 12th house. So this can definitely be a time where, you know, it's kind of like, okay, like, yeah, you've been working and, and putting in all this effort and taking all this action and initiating things in terms of work. But now it's time to like balance out your behind the scenes life, you know, things that maybe you've been neglecting or putting off or disregarding, you know, like things like your, your mental health, your subconscious habits, you know, like things that need to be dealt with, you know, and this can also bring up, you know, hidden matters, like things that are more hidden. Uh, this can also bring up, you know, like uh, retreats, hospitals, you know, anything that takes you out of your normal day-to-day -day life. So this is a good time. Like the way that I like to use 12th house energy is to either travel somewhere that I know is going to be very healing uh, if, if I can, or to really like take a step back and just like, okay, like I'm going to like rest with work and all of that. I'm going to dive really into my spirituality, my healing, you know, things like that and get really deep into those kinds of things. Because if not, what can happen is if you continue to push yourself, if you continue to overwork yourself, if you continue to try to focus on your external life, all like in all the day-to-day -day things that you have to do, 
then what will happen a lot of the times is something will kind of sit you down and then you're kind of forced to like take a step back, right? And it can be a lot of different things. Some people may get a cold and then they have to take a few days off or some people, you know, may like, you know, there may be something that happens where they're just, they, they have to kind of remove themselves from their day-to-day -day norms. So that's kind of this energy. So where can you rebalance out your life by focusing on these things behind the scenes that maybe haven't gotten your attention, you know, that maybe are affecting your day-to-day -day life, your performance and things like that, right? And so seeing these things from a new side, seeing these things from a new angle, learning new perspectives, things like this can really, really come in. And you may get some of this advice from a friend or you may be, you know, kind of seeing some of this in terms of your social life in some way where maybe your social life is like mirroring this back to you or like maybe you're online and you keep seeing all these memes or all these people are talking about how you need to lean back and how you need to kind of slow down and like go rest if you're working too hard or something, you know, like things like like that and so that's kind of what I'm really seeing for you Scorpio uh, you could also have some really interesting conversations around this time some interesting connections around this time uh, to do with things that maybe that you love or that you're passionate about um, that can seem very dreamy and mystical with uh, the Neptune energy in your fifth opposing Venus in your 11th so, so yeah, that's basically what I'm seeing for you. Scorpio, let me know down below if any of this resonates with you. You may not notice this right off the bat, right? Uh, new moons are basically dark. You can't really see them because it's like a blank slate. It's a new beginning. Creation is still forming, right? So what happens is you'll start noticing this as the week goes on, as the next few weeks go on. So if you don't notice all these themes right off the bat, they'll probably start unfolding as the weeks go on. So Moving on to Sagittarius. Sagittarius, this new moon is happening in your 11th house of your social life, your networking, your connections, the different connections and acquaintances that are in your life. This can be social media groups, a yoga class, you know, how you, how you meet people, how you interact with the world, how you interact with society, you know, it can be a lot of different, a lot of different things, but it's like different connections you make. And so this new moon can really bring that up. You could be thinking about, you know, how you want to connect with more people. You could be thinking about, you know, maybe you find some like-minded people. Maybe you find like a debate group or something like that. Or maybe you're noticing a lot of people's different opinions. Maybe you're looking for more friends in your life that kind of share different perspectives or that are more harmonious, like that your connection with is more harmonious. Maybe this is related to career, like career acquaintances, career connections, networking in terms of your career and, you know, your your professional life in some way, marketing, you know, all of these different things could be coming up for this new moon. So on top of that, with this Venus uh, Mercury conjunction happening in Virgo, you could also be seeing like where certain connections could maybe improve your professional life, your career or something like that, you know, like, and also you could be seeing where maybe there are certain things in your personal life that you may need to let go of or that you may need to um, forgive or surrender to or something like that. Or maybe you need to get back in touch with your roots in some way or really balance out your internal life, your personal life with your external professional worldly life, right? And so that's kind of the theme of this of this new moon for you. It's definitely bringing in new sides, new perspectives in terms of your social life and your reputation and things like that, your professional life. So let me know down below if this resonates, Sag. I would really love to hear your feedback and what happens for you for this new moon. If you didn't hear, I am having a sale right now, 22% off of my astrological natal chart readings. And I'm also doing a self-love program starting this coming week, a uh, self-love and rebirth program. It's just one week long. It's super affordable because I really want a lot of people to be able to access this because this is something I'm very freaking passionate about. So if that interests you, see the description below. So moving on to Capricorn. So Capricorn, this new moon for you is happening in your 10th house. This is your professional life. This is your career. This is your legacy. This is where you're going in life. Your big, expansive, 
goals in life, the things that you want to achieve, the direction you want to go in, authority figures, you know, the big things in life. And so this Libra new moon can definitely be a time where you're focused on those things. You're focused on your professional life. You're wanting to bring more balance, more harmony, more peace into your professional life, or you're wanting to bring in something that you don't see a lot in your professional life. You know, maybe it's like a side that other people aren't seeing that you want to that you wanna kind of raise to the surface so it keeps the balance in some way, right? This could also be a time where you are connecting with others in terms of your career, your professional life, where maybe you are, you know, kind of seeing other people's sides, you're connecting with other people, you're collaborating with other people, you are working with other people, things like that, like your, your professional relationships could really come into play here. And so you could also be learning new things, uh, learning how to improve yourself in terms of your career, in terms of your public image, your reputation, you know, how other people see you. Uh, you do want to just be careful with this Libra energy in your, I probably should have said this for Sag too, but in your 10th house that you're not comparing yourself to other people too much. And that if you do find that you are, maybe ask yourself why, you know, why like, do you think that they have something? that you don't and why do you think you don't have it because you likely do have it you're just not seeing it right and so that's something that I would really ask yourself around this time if that's happening to you this could also be really uncovering uh, more of your personal motivation you may have a personal motivation that comes in in terms of your family your roots your childhood your past like things that happened in the past you know you may have these certain motivations that are really a driving factor in this new moon in this new beginning that's forming in terms of your professional life that are really kicking back in, right? But either way, there's some kind of balance here happening between your personal life, your home life, your family life versus your professional life, your career, your lifelong goals, things like that. So you could also be feeling very creative and kind of like intellectually creative at this time, right? Like you could be studying a lot of different things, learning a lot of different things and uh, figuring out how to express those things and create with those things in your day-to-day -day life and, you know, things like that with this uh, Nep Neptune, Venus um, opposition happening in your third and your ninth house. So let me know down below Capricorn if that resonated for you. I'd really love to hear your feedback as always. I also am doing a sale on my readings right now for 22% off if you are interested. And I also have a self-love course, sorry, program happening on Monday called Phoenix. It is for self-love and rebirth, and it is going to be so powerful and it's super affordable. So if you are interested in it, see the description below. Moving on to Aquarius, darling. So Aquarius, this new moon in Libra is happening in your ninth house, higher education, learning new things, teaching, you know, religion, politics, worldviews, and you have Libra here, the sign of fairness and justice. <laughs> so you're likely seeing, going to be seeing a lot of that in the world if you haven't already, right? You may be focused on bigger topics of fairness and justice, equality, things like that, balance, trying to find a middle ground or, or whatever. This is what I would say to you, Aquarius, if this is you, right? And you are kind of built this way. You are kind of built to, to look at things from a very broad perspective, from a very worldly perspective, right? And a, a societal perspective a lot of the times. But I would say this, right? So I kind of realized for myself because I got very into focusing on, you know, big issues, you know, and politics and all of that last year, as I'm sure many people did. And something that I eventually realized was that I can either focus on what's unfair in the world and what is bad about the world and what's destructive about the world and, and all of those things, or I can focus on creating being part of creating fairness and the things that I want to see in the world, right? And so, because when you're focused on all of that, uh, you may not, like, you, you end up kind of contributing to it, right? You're not really focused on the other side of it. You're not really focused on bringing the other side of it into creation, right? And so, you end up kind of getting stuck in that, like, self-fulfilling cycle. It ends up becoming, like, it, it just feeds itself. And so when you can kind of get back to this is what I want to create in the world and 
I want to see more of this in the world. So that's what I'm going to embody. That's what I'm going to help others do. That's what I'm going to create. You know, that's when you can kind of shift to like a healthier perspective. And that's what I've noticed for me. It may not be like that for you. And you don't have to take that advice if you don't want to. But I've just noticed that for me. And you may not even be focusing on like worldly events. This could be playing out in a lot of different ways. Maybe you're learning, you know, uh, <laughs> maybe you're learning like more uh, higher artistic things, right? Like this is like the the higher arts. This is like higher education. You know, those are the things that you could be more focused on right now, you know, but it can play out over the next few weeks if it's not already where there are certain, you know, uh, injustices and things like that happening that you see that can really kind of rile you up. Now, this could also be that you're starting to see a different side to something. You're starting to see a new perspective to your belief systems. You're starting to see a new, like different sides of different ways of viewing world events, different ways of viewing different things, you know? And so this can be very beneficial for that. It's like what you thought you knew right? You're now seeing another side to on a bigger scale, right? And so this can really kind of have you seeing other sides to what you thought you knew, basically. And then on top of that, we have the Venus Mercury conjunction happening in your eighth house opposing Neptune in your second. So this can also be bringing up the topic of money and finances and, you know, things like that, your priorities, where is there this kind of balance that needs to be found or this middle ground that needs to be found between, you know, control and planning and, you know, perfecting versus letting go, going with the flow, you know, things like that. So that can really come up at this time as well. So with that being said, that is what I am seeing for you, uh, Aquarius. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated. I'm also running a sale on my readings right now. If you are interested, you can get 22% off. See the description below. And I'm also doing a very, very powerful self-love course starting this coming week that is super affordable. So if you're interested in that, see the description below as well. And we are going to move on to Pisces. So for Pisces, this full moon is happening in your eighth house of other people's money, other people's finances, shared finances, the dynamics of your money, finances, possessions with you versus other people, you and other parties, right? Like any kind of anything that you get from others, anything that you give to others, it's kind of that kind of energy, right? Like an energetic exchange. And so these are the things that can be coming up right now, right? Like what's fair and what's balanced in terms of what you get and give uh, with other people. Uh, and you've likely already seen some of these things coming up with Mercury retrograde starting in Libra as well in your eighth house. But this new moon is really bringing in a new beginning, right? A kind of fresh start to some degree where it's like, okay, like you're possibly very, you know, focused on really balancing out your finances, balancing out your money, things like that, finding a middle ground or finding a, you know, a solution, negotiating, mediating, you know, coming to terms with something, coming together for something, etc. Collaborating, things like that are going to be very big for this Libra new moon for you Pisces. Now, on top of that, this could be because maybe you were taking a lot of action or initiating a lot of things financially, or you were a little bit more concerned with your own money, your own finances. And so this Libra New Moon is like, hey, uh, what you're doing may be affecting your partner, or you know, maybe there's a way that you can work together or collaborate, or maybe there's a, a balance here that needs to be found, right? Maybe we need to look at another side of this, right? So on top of that, we have Venus and Mercury in your seventh house, uh, opposite Neptune in your first house. So this is really bringing up kind of this dynamic within you versus your partner, your relationships, etc., where maybe there's been this energy of trying to fix, perfect, find a solution, improve with your relationships. And now there's maybe this time, maybe there's, maybe this is a time to also balance that out with like letting go, surrendering, you know, maybe you're more go with the flow and your partner's a little more, you know, trying to control things or fix things or find a solution. And so 
this could bring up some conversations around these themes that you could kind of see or a revisiting of these themes that you could see between you and your relationship. But that is basically what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. Let me know down below if any of that resonates with you. I would really love to hear your feedback. I'm also running a sale on my readings right now. You can read more about that below. And I also have a super affordable but powerful self-love course program. I keep saying course, a self-love program starting this week. It's only one week long, but it's going to be super powerful. I'm super, super excited. And uh, yeah, we are moving on to Aries. So Aries, this Libra new moon is happening in your seventh house, darling. So this is all about your relationships, Aries. This is all about other people. Maybe you've been in this energy of like, you know, work and putting, you know, just doing a lot of things in terms of work or for other people. Maybe you've been, you know, kind of, but also working towards improving certain things in your life, improving yourself, etc. You know, there's just been, there's been a lot of busyness probably for Aries risings as well with Mars in your third and all this Virgo energy in your sixth. Maybe through all of that though, you've been kind of neglecting your relationships, right? This Libra new moon is bringing in an energy of like, hey, uh, I know you're you, but what about we, right? Like, so this Libra new moon can be like, hey, like, you know, time to focus on your relationships, time to balance out the relationships. You can really find uh, really new perspectives come in from other people at this time. And if you can see other people's perspectives, right? This can definitely be a time where you can really see a new side of something. You can see other people's sides of things and really just kind of put yourself in other people's shoes at times if you can. And this new moon is really bringing that energy in. It's really showing you another side of your relationship, showing you your relationship dynamics over these next couple weeks and showing you the balance, the harmony, the, the you know, peace that may need to be found here, right? The middle ground, the compromise that may need to be found here in your relationships. Now, on top of that, with this Venus and Mercury conjunction happening in your sixth house, opposite Neptune in your 12th house, this is really, really a time where you may be called to balance out rest and letting go, healing, forgiving, things like that with your day-to-day -day life, your day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day duties, right? So this is really bringing in maybe also like a spiritual practice or a spiritual perspective into your day-to-day -day lives, um, maybe even bringing in creativity into your day-to-day -day life, you know, things like that. So this is definitely going to be uh, really interesting if you are an Aries rising. Let me know down below, Aries, how this is playing out for you. If any of this resonated, I would really, really love to hear your feedback. And uh, I am also doing a sale on my readings right now for the first time in forever. You can see more about that below. And I'm also doing a self-love program starting this coming week. It's super affordable. It's only one week long and I'm so, so excited for it. It's going to be very, very powerful. So if this is something you're interested in, see the description below as well. Okay, Taurus rising, darlings. This Libra new moon is happening in your sixth house of your day-to-day -day task, duties, work, routines, your how you take care of your health on a day-to-day -day basis, how you take care of yourself, how you, you know, do do the things that you have to do to kind of, you know, keep your keep your life in order, right? And so Libra, this Libra new moon happening here is like, how can you bring more ease? How can you bring more peace? How can you bring more harmony? How can you bring more balance into this area of your life, right? How can you maybe balance out your routines more? How can you bring more harmony into the task and the duties, the day-to-day -day stuff, right? This is like, this is really a time of like, okay, I need to balance my routines. I need to balance my day-to-day, -day, my day-to-day -day shit, right? Like it may be, it may be feeling a little bit out there all over the place, you know, and this can really give you a new perspective on your day-to-day -day task, your day-to-day -day routines. You could gain a new perspective. You could gain a new clarity, you know, you could collaborate with others on certain work projects or something like that. You could have different people helping you. This could also bring up like your relationships with co-workers and, you know, think other people in terms of your work, you know, employees, employers, things like that. So you could really be kind of trying to find the balance in some area. Uh, 
of of this sixth house realm you know uh, you could be trying to balance out like your your health regimen like things like that your diet all of those kinds of things right now on top of that we have the venus mercury conjunction happening in your fifth house so this is really nice you know this is like okay you've been working on trying to you know, maybe fix something, improve something, work on something, maybe crafty or something that brings you joy or, you know, something that you're passionate about, some kind of project maybe. And so this is a time where you can get a lot of clarity on that, where you can feel like you are, um, like the things you are doing feel good, right? Like the, the different tasks that you're doing are maybe starting to feel good and you're wanting to invite more ease into that and, and into your day-to-day -day life, right? And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Taurus. Let me know down below what you're feeling for this new moon and if any of that resonated. I would really love to hear your feedback. And uh, also I have a sale going on for the first time in forever on my personal reading. So if you'd like to get a personal reading with me, I have a 22% off sale. See the description below. I also have a very, very powerful one week long self-love journey happening this week and it's super affordable so you don't want to miss out on it if you are interested in that see the description below as well we are going to move on to gemini so gemini this libra new moon is happening in your fifth house <laughs> and this is interesting because this is your house of dating romance sex you know creativity fertility where you find your joy where you find things that you love and so this is a time where it's like time to chill man like time to be as cool as a cucumber chill out get into your aesthetic get into your vibe you know this can be a time for dating to bring more romance back into your relationship you know to to bring you know a sense of charm and flirtation back into your relationship if it's been feeling a little bit stale or boring or if you've been working too much in terms of your career or your home and family life etc and so you know mars has been in your sign so it you know, there's been a lot of energy, right? Like you've probably been feeling like you're going a mile a minute, like you're working on all these things or doing all these things or thinking about all these things. At least you've had all this Virgo energy in your fourth house. So maybe you've been redecorating, rearranging, renovating, you know, on your home, whatever. But now it's like, okay, I want to chill. I want to get into my vibe. You know, I want to get into my aesthetic. I want to do things that feel good, that bring a sense of harmony, that that bring a classiness and a sense of like eloquence into my life, right? Or I always say eloquence, but I don't know. I think I'm thinking of eloquent, but I think I mean eleg elegance, elegance. I think that's right. I don't know why. <laughs> Mercury is retrograding right now in my third house. Actually, I lied. It's now in my second house. I forgot it went back into Virgo, but for whatever reason, Mercury retrograde has been really screwing me up on my words lately. I cannot think straight when it comes to words, but hopefully you get what I mean here. Um, so with that being said, this is a really great time to get back into the things that you love, to express yourself in new ways, to see new ways to express yourself and express the things that make you happy, that feel good, that bring you passion, right? Like find new ways of expressing yourself and, um, you know, like poetry or writing or whatever, you know, like doing, going on romantic dates with your significant other, you know, things like that can really feel very, very good around this time. So with that being said, I think that's everything for you, Gemini. <laughs> Let me know down below if this resonated. I would love to know. I'm doing a sale right now on my personal readings for 22% off for a limited time. You can see the description below for more details. I'm also doing a very powerful self-love program starting this week. It's only going to be one week long and it is super affordable right now because I want a lot of people to be able to access this because it is just going to be very, very good and I'm very excited for it. So if you're interested in that, see the description below and we are gonna move on to Cancer. So Cancer, this Libra new moon is happening in your fourth house of home and family, your personal life, things going on you know, in your personal life, things going on in your family, things going on in your home, your living situation, your roots, your childhood, parents, et cetera, right? So this Libra new moon happening in your fourth is really a time of bringing back the balance, the harmony, the peace, 
into your family and home life, right? And so this is a time where you may be thinking about changing up your you know, changing up your home, changing up a room, getting the feng shui going, you know, maybe you want to decorate like this, you know, Venus rules Libra. So this is a time of like really expressing yourself in a beautiful way in terms of, you know, your home life, right? And in terms of your family, this can be a time where you find that you're mediating a lot more over these next few weeks, right? Like more than you likely already do with Libra in your fourth or that you're having to mend conflicts, find a middle ground. You know, this can also be a time where it may be time to let go of old conflicts. You know, it may be time to kind of mend fences there, right? And just kind of let it go and learn how to address things in a classy way, but still get your truth across, you know? And so this Libra new moon is like showing you a new perspective in terms of home and family. It's bringing in this new energy here. It's showing you where maybe like you've been really focused, determined, motivated, or initiating a lot of action in terms of your career, your professional life, your long-term goals, things like that. But maybe you are being brought back in with this Libra new moon over the next few weeks to balance that out with your personal life, your family, what's been neglected here, where do you need to come back into harmony in this area, right? And you may be seeing new sides and new perspectives from other people, your relationships, right? Things like that. So let me know down below, Cancer, if this resonated and what you are noticing for this new moon in Libra. I'd really love to hear your feedback as always. And uh, I am also having a 22% off sale right now on my personal readings. You can read more about it below. And I'm also doing a self-love mini program this coming week that is going to be super, super powerful for a very affordable price because I want a lot of people to be able to access this. So if you are interested in that, see the description below. Moving on to Leo. So Leo, my fellow Leo risings, this new moon is happening in our third house, right? And so this is really showing us new ways of articulating ourselves, new ways of expressing ourselves. This is great for creative inspiration, creative ideas. It's really balancing out, you know, our day-to-day -day lives, our day-to-day -day ways of thinking and perceiving things. It's really showing us new sides and these new perspectives can come from other people. This is especially true for Leo Risings right now, like new perspectives, new opinions, new sides can really, really come in right now. And a lot of it can come from the people around us, friends, our daily environments, whatever we're reading or seeing or talking to on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, like whatever it is, the people and places and things that we interact with on a day-to-day -day basis can really be relevant right now, right? There may be a lot of places we're exploring in our environment. We may be invited to certain events from other people. This is really like our social butterfly time of year, you know? And so that can really be coming up right now. Now, on top of that, we also have this Venus Mercury conjunction happening in Virgo opposite Neptune. So this is very much about where do we need to be organized and in control and kind of in this like fix it energy when it comes to money and finances versus where do we need to let go, have faith, have some kind of spiritual you know, trust or whatever in terms of finances and, you know, long-term financial stability. And so these two polarities can really be coming up right now where we need to kind of find a middle ground here, right? And so that is what I'm seeing for uh, Leo rising. This is a really beautiful energy. If you, you know, create, if you talk to a lot of different people, if you, you know, are a very expressive person, this is really, really going to come out during this time and be very beautiful for you. So um, on top of that, Leo, I have a 22% off sale right now on my natal chart readings. You can see that info below. And I'm also doing a very powerful self-love mini program starting this week. It's only going to be one week long and it's super affordable because I want a lot of people to be able to access it. And this program is going to be so, so good. It's going to be so transformational. It's about self-love and rebirth. So if you've been feeling a little lost, a little stuck, a little like just feeling kind of like, you know, like something's like not right lately, whatever, or feeling a little confused about yourself, whatever. This is going to be so, so good. Also, I mean, even if you're just like you want to deepen into your self-love journey, etc., this program is going to be the shit. I am so, so excited for it. We start Monday. So if you're interested, there is more in the description below. So 
Moving on to Virgo, last and not, not least, Virgo Risings. This new moon for you is happening in your second house of money, honey. So this is all about your money, your income, your possession, your priorities. Where do these things need to be balanced out? Where do you need to see a new side? You know, this can also be your values, what you really value and finding a balance. Like, are you really acting on your values? You know, are you really in alignment with your values? And, you know, where this can also bring up relationships in terms of your money and finances, like who you share money and finances with or where you spend or put your money and finances, right? And the dynamics of that. And so that's kind of the big thing here, but you could be seeing another side in terms of money or this could be some kind of new beginning in terms of money, income, uh, finances, relationships, and energy exchanges, financial exchanges, collaborative you know, shared finances or resources, basically. So those are the of the big things that you could be noticing coming up. We also have Mercury retrograde back into your sign at home and Venus going uh, is going to be conjunct Mercury retrograde around this new moon in your sign. So this could be a very good time for articulating yourself a little bit, you know, in a more smooth, harmonious way. There could be conversations that you're having that are really important or really significant um, around this new moon. There could be decisions you're making around this new moon that are very significant, new perspectives that come in. You could be helping other people find new perspectives on situations, these kinds of things. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Virgo. Let me know down below if any of that resonates or what you do see come up for this new moon. I have a 22% off sale happening right now on my personal readings. You can read more about it in the description below. And then I also have a super powerful self-love and rebirth mini program happening this week. It's one week long and it's going to be very, very powerful. I'm super, super excited for it. So if any of that interests you, see the description below. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really, really, truly appreciate it. And I will see you guys in my other videos.